Hi guys, it's Ariana. Welcome back to my channel. So for tonight's video, we're going to be reading some more scary stories. So I'm just gonna give you guys a heads up now. This is a no sleep story, so it is a fictional story. So if you're not a fan of fictional stories, this is a fictional one. So keep that in mind when watching this video. This is not a true story. It's from the fictional Reddit subthread. No sleep. I have my wicked candle in here making the home smell like caramel apples. I do have my window AC unit kind of set up. So if you do hear outside noises, I'm assuming you guys won't because my mic does kind of muffle that. But if you guys hear outside noises, it is my outside because it is warm. So let's jump into these spooky stories. This is from the no sleep section. As I've said, it is from the Reddit author lumpy dash ambassador 100 and it's titled, this is why you should never enter strangers houses. I have been a birthday entertainer since 2013. The job itself pays well enough, in my case anyway. But today, I got a message from someone on WhatsApp. The name of their account was simply Elena, and they had no profile picture. We exchanged greetings, and as many times before in my career, we started deciding on the price. The first offer they gave me was a staggering $1,500 for two hours of work. At first, I hesitated, as the highest price I have ever been offered in the last 10 years was $500 per hour for one hour. I thought this must be a prank. I sat there contemplating. The last few months have been quite rough on me, and I was growing more and more desperate for a bit of extra cash. I agreed to the offer, and I asked which character they wanted me to be. They replied, Mickey Mouse. After about a two minute pause, we agreed to meet on Friday at two o'clock in the afternoon. They sent me the location and it was a two hour drive from my house. I sighed and for a second, I just really hoped it wasn't just a stupid joke and that I would end up in the middle of a desert or something. But then the number 1500 flew back into my mind and I decided to start getting ready for the trip. Friday was tomorrow. As I started up my Honda Civic, I opened the Navigator app on my phone, typed in the address and I slowly rolled out of my driveway. After one hour and 30 minutes of driving, I realized I was driving to a quite isolated place. There was hardly any cars in the streets and a lot of the houses were abandoned seemingly for decades. I was starting to doubt the offer more with every second. As I drove up to my final destination, I was doubtful as ever. It looked like a half abandoned house. It was the only house on the street. Well, at least it's not an empty patch of deserted land. I tried to reassure myself, failing miserably. I got out of the car and I started walking towards the house. I walked up to the door and I knocked once, twice, three times, and no one answered. I tried the doorbell, but it wouldn't ring. I rolled my eyes and I called the woman on my phone. The voice I heard was not what I expected. It was a voice of an old woman. It seemed like she was 70 and even more by the fragileness of her voice. Hello, she said a heartwarming sweet voice. I stammered with my answer for a few seconds, not expecting the woman to be elderly. Um, hello? Is this Elena? I patiently waited for the woman to answer. You are right, I am Elena. Are you the birthday entertainer? She asked. I said I was and asked her to open the door. In a few seconds, I heard the lock click and the door creaked open. Come on in, Elena told me, and I followed her into her house. The first red flag was the strong stench of something that smelled absolutely terrible. It was not the stench of an old carpet or mold, but something worse. Did Elena not smell this smell? The woman seemed to read my mind as soon as I thought of the stench. Elena told me, I hope you're not bothered by the smell. I accidentally burned my pie in the oven. Except the smell was in no way a burnt pie. I asked about the payment and Elena explained that I would get the money after the birthday. She also said that she had two sons, Martin and Mike. She told me they were playing in their rooms and that they were eight years old. Did she adopt these kids? I thought to myself. She made tea for me and asked me to put on my costume and wait until she woke the boys up. She went upstairs and I started sipping on the tea. After about seven minutes had passed, I started getting nervous. And after about 12 minutes, I was genuinely worried. Had Elena maybe tripped on the stairs and I hadn't heard it? Had something else happened? As those thoughts emerged in my mind, Elena finally came down the stairs and told me that the boys will go downstairs in a few minutes. Seeing that I had finished the tea, she asked, did you like the tea? It's our family recipe. I thanked her as the tea was quite delicious. Soon I heard quick and light footsteps on the stairs. I thought to myself, it must be the boys. And I looked over at the staircase and I saw two very small and malnourished boys. After them, two other similarly skinny boys descended the stairs. Hello, Mickey, one of the children said. 
with a very strange scent and the malnourishment of these children, something was very wrong here. As I proceeded to do my best Mickey Mouse impressions for the 10,000th time, the children seemed to not act on their own, but instead as if somebody forced them to. Every word of excitement was dry and strained. At some point, the old woman, Elena, decided to go to the shower and informed me of it, that she was gonna go upstairs as I continued to entertain them. As soon as I and the children heard the sound of the shutting door, they started frantically saying things to me like, help us, please, and we don't wanna be here. I asked the children to slow down and explain everything. One of the kids came forward. He was the smallest of them all. He started explaining that that thing trapped us in this home and it's been keeping us here for months. It only feeds us three days of the week and it hurts us if we try to escape. I asked the children why it was referring to it as a thing and what they said scared me to the bone. It isn't a person. After hearing those words, I started thinking about getting these poor kids out of here. The first idea was to try the front door and back doors. But before I even got the chance, the children said, the doors are always locked. I thought of a reply and asked them, what about the windows? They replied similarly as before, they are locked too. I tried to search for the keys, opening every door as silently as I could. I took a knife from the kitchen and I soon found a newspaper in one of the living room cabinets. The first title read, four children go missing on Halloween night. And the second, the four children that went missing in late 2022 still haven't been found and families losing hope. As I stood up, I was thinking about the newspaper and I started to feel drowsy, like extremely tired, like seasick and being on a roller coaster for 10 times straight combined. Soon after starting to feel sick, I felt a heavy object hit the back of my head. And the last thing I heard before my vision completely backed out was the shrill screams of the children. I woke up tied to a pole in a very tight rope, so tight that my arms felt numb and dull. I was in what appeared to be a basement and that wretched smell was the strongest. It attacked my nostrils almost immediately after opening my eyes. Almost everything was covered in webs and it was extremely dark. After struggling against the rope for 10 minutes, I was covered in sweat and realized there was no way to get out of here. I fell asleep after about two hours. The sound that awoke me were sounds of screams, then crying, then more footsteps. Someone was coming down. I played dead and soon heard the door to the basement opening. I heard the kids screaming and mumbling, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and then the door slammed shut. I realized the kids were alone and opened my eyes. The kids seemed happy that I was with them down there and they started explaining that the thing would trap them in here for days without food if they misbehaved. One of the kids said, when that thing hit you with the baseball bat, the knife you took fell out of your hands. And when that thing turned around, we quickly picked it up from the floor. I quickly asked them to carefully cut the rope that kept me tied up on the pole. And after a few minutes of the kids cutting the rope carefully with their fragile hands, it gave away and I had a rush of blood hit my cold hands. With me now freed, we started thinking of what to do. I couldn't stay here for long. Elena, or rather whatever it was, as the kids call her, will hopefully kill me, if not something much worse. The kids told me there was a hatch that led to the bathroom on the first floor and that they used it only when they had to go to the washroom or if they needed to get out for food or drink. The kids gave me a knife and wished me good luck. I climbed the ladder, opened the hatch, and I was in the bathroom. As I quietly listened for the thing, I realized that there was no sound except for my breathing. I figured it had gone upstairs and I very quietly opened the door, knife in hand. I looked around and thought that this was my chance to search for the key. I searched downstairs and the key was nowhere to be found. I convinced myself that the only way out was with the key, so I decided to search upstairs. I scoured every drawer and cabinet until finally finding a key in the upstairs bedroom. I breathed a sigh in my mind and silently sprinted downstairs to the bathroom. I opened the hatch on the floor and quickly descended the ladder. I explained my plan to the kids and we got ready to get the hell out of here. We climbed up the ladder and hardly fitting in the small bathroom listened for the thing. It seemed to pass the bathroom and go to the basement door. Now was our only chance, I thought to myself. I whispered for the kids to get ready, slowly opened the door and slipped out. Running for the front door, I had only one key and I hoped sincerely that it would fit the lock. And to my horror, it didn't. The thing must have heard me trying to open the lock and fast, loud, heavy footsteps, definitely not made by an elder, sounded in the air. I exchanged brief glances with the children and we ran to the back door. 
I only ran for half a second when I felt a blunt force hit my side. I flew into the wall beside me and got a brief glimpse of that apparent thing. It was not the sweet elderly woman, but her elongated and stretched body, skin torn in some parts. My heart skipped a beat when it reached to grab me, but I thrust the knife into its chest. It produced the loudest sound I've ever heard. It was a mixture of a bear and an injured antelope crying. The sound left my ears ringing and I ran towards the door, jamming the key in. I don't know how to describe this feeling other than euphoria when the lock clicked. The kids ran outside and I followed closely. That thing tripped on the steps as I opened the door from my car. I jammed the key in with such force, I almost broke my hand. I started up the car and I floored it, tires screeching. We drove back to my home and I gave the kids some food and called the police, telling them about how I found the missing kids and so on. That day they investigated. I told them the location of the house and they told me something strange. The house was apparently abandoned for seven years. They explored the house and found three bloodied rags and an old woman's decomposing corpse. And they said they had identified her. Her name was Elena. They had also said that the parents of all the children had been found deceased in their homes over the past year. All of the deaths were caused by blunt trauma. I have now adopted the kids and have been living with them for a month. Today I wrote this all down. Please do not go into strangers' houses, even if the people living there seem nice. They might not be people at all. And that was the whole story, so that is fucking terrifying. I'm glad that is a fictional story because I have straight up goosebumps all over my hands. That is absolutely fucking insane. You were definitely dealing with a shapeshifter of some sort, and that is just super freaking creepy. I hated that so much. I'm gonna read one more story just because I thought that that story was gonna be a little bit longer than it is and we're only at like the 15 minute mark. So I'm going to read one more story if I can find one. And thank you so much for allowing me to read your story. That one was really, really creepy and I hated everything about it. It was absolutely just terrifying, oh my God. So the next one that I'm gonna read is just from the Paranormal Encounter section. It is from the Reddit author, Endergirl underscore one, two, three underscore, and it's titled, my 11 year old sister can see ghosts. Can anyone explain this? The first one was a seven foot eight white figure with hands that curve and fade at the end. She saw it in broad daylight in town. She blinked several times as most of the spirit she saw went away in a blink, but not this one. It also walked in a smooth flowy way. The second one was roughly the same height, but completely black. She saw it looking down at her upon her leaving her bedroom. Another looked like a young girl with black hair and a white dress with dirt patches and burn holes. The last one was seen looking similar to the girl, but by her bed. My sister sleeps on a raised bed, so the girl she saw was said to be floating. She also heard knocking through her room, a consistent knock, 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 started on her bedroom window every 30 seconds to a minute. It would knock again always three times in a row. It kept getting closer too, from the window to each of our four cupboards, to the door, then under our beds. She said she could feel the knocking from under her bed, not just hear it. The last wasn't a knock. She felt something grab her knee. It felt like bones. Does anyone know what these figures could be and what happens if we were trying to communicate with one? She's worried she'll anger them by trying to communicate, so she just basically ignores them. Update, the three knocks were already inside the room, not outside of the door. Also, she saw these when she was very young, then it stopped for a while. Now she only sees them again as of this year. And that is the whole story. I have absolutely no idea what that could be, but please don't use a Ouija board or try to communicate with them at all. Just ignore them. If you heard a knock, no, you freaking didn't. It's like the Appalachian Mountains. If you hear a whistling, no, you fucking didn't. Just absolutely ignore it. That is the only advice I can give you that is fucking terrifying. The fact that you can actually feel it like full blown knocking underneath your bed. I hate that so much. That is not okay. I would shit bricks and move out of that house. That is terrifying. So this is where I'm going to end the video. So thank you so much for watching. If you guys made it to the end of the video, leave me your favorite pink emoji because we're going with this pink look today. If you guys are interested in this creepy story with this look that I did today, it'll be up on my short section. It's also going to be up on my TikTok. You guys can go watch it from either platform. It's basically the same video on both platforms, but I just cross platform post everywhere because I'm trying to get more people to my channel and my shorts have actually been doing very well on YouTube. But if you guys could still go watch them and comment on them and like them that would help me so much because the more you guys engage with them the better they do on the algorithm same with this video the more you guys like comment and share this video the more youtube promotes it it does help me boost my channel in the algorithm and it really does help get youtube promoting my channel a little bit more just because views have been pretty low lately and i don't really know what happened it just 
YouTube algorithm changed and I don't really know how to fix it. But this is where I'm gonna end the video because we are already at the 20 minute mark and I need to edit this and upload this because I haven't posted a full length video in like a week. I've just been posting shorts. So I'm going to post this one tonight and I cannot wait to film another one for you guys. And I will post hopefully again in the next couple of days, a long form video like this because I have a bunch of stories that I really wanna read, but I'm waiting for authors. So I really need authors to approve me to read their stories before I can read them. So if you guys have any creepy stories that you want me to read on the channel, please feel free to message me either over Instagram, over my email, and I will definitely read you guys' personalized stories because I really don't have any from you guys at the moment and I need more stories. So please feel free to reach out to me and I will definitely read your creepy stories. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye.